What is going on everybody? I go by the name of Curry and I want to thank you guys for joining me here today on Sneaker Fetish. So the day that I'm filming this is Saturday and actually it's Saturday, April the 11th, the day that the Court Purple Jordan 1s dropped on the Sneakers app. But today isn't necessarily about the sneaker as much as it is about the Sneakers app. Now the Sneakers app originated as a revolutionary new way that we can digitally start buying sneakers both limited and general release from Nike and Jordan brand. However, in 2020, the sneakers app has actually grown into a full experience, not just for retail and shopping, but for storytelling, as well as a platform for highlighting small creators, as well as larger ones. It's becoming a community tool. There's polls now. There are stories about the different kinds of collections people have now. There's highlighted stories that has to do from city to city. There's shop talk that talks about different brands that the company wholesales to, different retailers that have interesting story stores like Pata, Atmos, and different places like that. The app not only is a way to be updated on what's coming out soon, but it's also a way to immerse yourself in sneaker culture as a whole, and it's taken over the game. But while it's taking over the game, and while that sounds all well and good, the sneakers app to many people is nothing more than an infuriating reminder that other people are getting sneakers that they can't get their hands on. That big got em screen doesn't seem to come as often for a lot of people as the sold out sign, and a lot of people are getting frustrated and they want to know why. What is it that I can do to increase my chances to get certain shoes and certain product on that app. Well, I'm here to help you guys out today because I know a lot of you guys have been super frustrated with the way the sneakers app works. And I'm here to give you guys 10 tips that may help you out with getting future releases. So if you're ready, let's jump straight into it. Now, some of these tips may seem pretty elementary, pretty rudimentary, but honestly, they really do help. And it's small things like this that actually can be the determinant between getting a shoe and not getting a shoe. The first thing I want you guys to understand is that the sneakers app is still an app. And any app is run by a system of algorithms and computations. And the way that you can manipulate those algorithms and those computations has everything to do with your success rate. Now, I also want to preface this by saying that what I'm saying today will not guarantee that you can get any sneaker that you want. But these methods have been proven not only by myself, but other people both on Twitter, Instagram, and kind of close friends of mine as well. And they have told me more than once, more than twice, that these methods really do tend to work. So like I mentioned, we're going to start off with the base and then we're going to get into some more advanced tips and tricks. Then we're going to go into some things that I know a lot of people deem a little bit more controversial, but it's a doggy dog war when it comes to these sneakers and it is what it is. Tip number one, make sure that your app is up to date. Now the sneakers app does not always tell you when it's time to update your app. So you have to constantly be going into your app store or your Google Play store to make sure that you have the latest version of the sneakers app. Not having the latest version could mean that there's a change in the algorithm or a change in the coding or a change in the way that they process orders or the speed in which they process orders. And if you are behind the times, you're not going to cop a shoe. Now staying in line with making sure that your app is completely up to date. Tip number two is a little more difficult difficult for a lot of people, which is making sure that your phone is also up to date. Making sure that you can get your hands on the fastest phone as possible means that you have a phone with the fastest processor, the most RAM, the best metrics and specs inside of the phone that can make sure that your app is running faster than your competitions. I'll give you guys my secrets. For my main phone, I use the iPhone 11 Pro. It's the fastest iPhone on the market. It's kind of the benchmark when it comes to all cell phones out here, and it really does go very, very fast. Now, my secondary phone that you guys are seeing here, this is the T-Mobile OnePlus 7 Pro. Now, even Marquez Brownlee, MKBHD, I know a lot of you guys may watch his tech videos, he actually named this as the 2019 phone of the year because of how impressive the specs are and how affordable the phone remains to be. This phone is incredibly fast. It works faster than any other phone I've ever seen before. It gets through a lot of cues and things of that nature. However, the little caveat about this phone is that it's only available on T-Mobile. So if you don't have T-Mobile, you can't get your hands on one of these OnePlus phones. So check with your local carrier to see which phone is the absolute fastest that's in your price range. Get your hands on it and get the sneakers app on it ASAP. Tip number three, make sure that your profile information is filled out in full. 
Make sure that there's nothing that's going to stop processing of payments on your account, such as excluding an apartment number, a street number, or things of that nature. When you're in your settings, make sure that everything is accurate and it's up to date completely. Now, look, I know that this stuff seems to be pretty elementary for a lot of people, but you guys will be surprised how many times a street number gets left off or a direction, like if you live on a northwest or a south or an east type of street or an apartment number or something gets left off, how many times that can mess up your chances. You guys gotta remember, your shipping and billing information need to match as closely as they possibly can to make sure that that order processes correctly. A lot of you guys get payment errors or third-party payment errors because your shipping and your billing information aren't jiving correctly. So make sure that when you're filling out your profile information, that goes for your shipping and billing. And whatever your billing information is also matches your exact billing information that's actually on the card that you're using. Now, let's get into the good stuff. Tip number four, log out of the app completely about 10 to 15 minutes before any drop happens that's getting ready to happen on the sneakers app. Make sure that you're completely logged out of the app. And one thing that I like to do is actually close the app completely. I'll completely close the app out, make sure it's not running, completely log out, and then I will go back into the app and log back in. What that does is you're basically clearing the cache. And if you guys don't know what the cache is, basically it's all the stored information that keeps the program running in the background. Sometimes it actually helps your app run a little bit faster if you clear the cache, log out, refresh, sometimes even update your app and then go back into it. It kind of resets everything and refreshes everything. If you leave your computer on, for a really, really long time, like a week, right? You'll notice that your computer will start to hang. It'll start to move a little bit slowly. It won't move as quickly as you think it should be. But if you turn it off, if you shut it all the way down and then you cut it right back on, you'll notice that everything tends to pop up a little faster. Everything seems to run a little bit cleaner. That's the exact same thing here. Remember, these phones are nothing more than little computers these days. So they need to be refreshed just the same. Turn your phone off, reset your phone, reset your apps. Make sure that you're doing all the refresh is the power cycling and things of that nature to make sure that your app is running at an optimal speed. Now that brings me to my fifth tip. Now on release day, I know a lot of you guys will log out of your app and then log back in. But the problem is when you log back in, you immediately go for the shoe instead of turning back on your fingerprint scanner or your face ID. Let me keep it a buck with you guys. If you're not using fingerprint scanner or face ID to cop these shoes, you ain't copying. So what you need to make sure that you do is when you log back into your app after logging out completely, you go back into your settings and you turn your fingerprint reader or your face ID back on. Now the app will prompt you for your password. You'll re-enter your password to re-engage fingerprint scanning or face ID. Remember guys, it's survival of the fittest and it's dog eat dog out here. And the moment that these sneakers go live, a lot of people are looking at their face and it's automatically putting them in line where they're reading their fingerprint and it's automatically putting them in line. So all the time that it's going to take you to retype your password back in is precious time that you're losing getting into the queue. So let's say you've done everything you need to do. You've logged out, you've logged back in using your fingerprint scanner, your face ID, and you feel like you're good. No, not yet. You're not good yet. Why? Because you need to go into the payment information next and make sure that you have PayPal, Apple Pay, or any fast type of payment engage in order to make your purchases. Listen guys, this is very crucial. A lot of releases are first come first serve. And what that means is that Nike is processing these orders as fast as they can. As Nike is processing these orders as fast as they can, they wanna take payment as fast as they can. PayPal seems to be a fantastic way to take payment very, very quickly. I don't know what it is about the sneakers app and PayPal, but they are integrated very, very well. So if you have PayPal, you have a much greater chance of making sure that your payment goes through than to have any kind of third party failures using a straight up debit or credit card. When you're using a debit or a credit card and your payment is processing, it has to go through the payment network that your card is authorized through. Now what that means is sometimes you can have a third party payment failure and you don't want that. PayPal is a trusted source of secure online payments. So Nike already knows that PayPal is good money. So if you process a payment through PayPal, Nike's gonna pick it up just like that because they already know that the money is good. Same thing with Apple Pay. Apple and Nike, as you guys know, have an incredible relationship with one another. So if you're on an iPhone, use PayPal or Apple Pay, you will be good. On Android, you still have the option to do PayPal and I would make that option your top option for processing payments if you can. All right guys, we're down to tip number seven and I I 
wanna make sure that you guys hear me very, very clearly. These accounts do not endorse this channel. I don't know the people that run these accounts on Twitter, but I'm just letting you guys know from my personal experience, if you turn on notifications on Twitter from these Twitter channels, you stand a much greater chance of copying sneakers as soon as they come out, especially for shock drops than anybody else will. And those three accounts are Sneaker Twitter, J23 app, and Soul Links. These three accounts tend to have monitors that work behind the scenes, and we'll get into monitors in a second, but they seem to have monitors that work behind the scenes that immediately let them know when a sneaker is available or a sneaker is coming up as available on the sneakers app. So if you ever missed out on a shock drop, like I know I have sometimes, a lot of times those shock drops are announced via J23 app, Soul Links, or sneaker Twitter Twitter accounts. Now on top of that, Soul Links and J23 app also have apps that you can download onto your phone that give you a push notification the moment that something that's really hot goes live on the sneakers app. I would strongly recommend that you download the J23 app and the Soul Links app to make sure you don't miss out on future drops. All right, guys, we're down to tip number eight, and this is an extremely crucial tip for you guys to understand the way this app works. And honestly, I think it's the reason why a lot of people are not able to get the sneakers that they want to get. So listen close. Like I mentioned before, sneakers is an app that's built on algorithms. Now, what Nike is trying to do is they're trying to make sure that they get the most dedicated customers to each of their different retail channels access to the sneakers that are up and coming and the newest sneakers that are coming out in their selected interest. Nike wants to make everything fair for people and the only way to make it fair is to track data that tracks what people are truly interested in. Now, from a couple of trusted sources, I can tell you guys that this information is known to be true. So again, listen very closely. We all have done this before and I know I've been guilty so I know a lot of you guys watching have also been guilty as well. When you're in the sneakers app, you go to the upcoming tab and you see a little button that says notify me next to all the sneakers that are slated to drop. Now what a lot of people do is they go down the list and they say notify me, notify me, notify me, notify me, notify me, no matter what the sneaker is, any kind of sneaker, any kind of category, people tend to want to be notified of each and everything that's coming out that's actually messing you up, and here's why. The notify me button, as well as the little heart button here, is designed to track data back to Nike to tell them that you are interested specifically in this kind of product. So they feel like that kind of product is going to be your top priority as far as knowing what you're willing to buy as a consumer. The problem when you choose notify me on every single thing that's dropping on the app is that you're confusing the algorithm. It doesn't know what you're truly interested in, so it doesn't know what to give you access to first. So a lot of times it's gonna skip over your account and is going to go to people that have a little bit more narrow direction as far as what they're willing to buy because the app knows they're willing to buy this, but they're not willing to buy that. Contrary to popular belief, hitting notify me on everything will not increase your chances of getting stuff. It actually will decrease your chance of getting stuff because you're screwing around with the algorithm. So please hear me clearly when I say this. Only hit the notify me button in your app for sneakers that you know you are going to buy if you get exclusive access to it or if you get the ability to purchase it. The same thing with the favorite button. Now, the cool thing about the favorite button is that you can also favorite stories, kick checks, street stories, little things like that. When you favorite those things that are not directly buying sneakers, it lets the app know that you're interacting with it properly. It tracks if you guys are watching all those stories. It tracks if you guys are doing the polls. This app tracks everything that you do, so you can't trick it. You can't not interact with the app the way that they want you to, but still think you're gonna get exclusive access to everything and top priority when it comes time for sneakers to drop. You have to make this app low key a part of your life. Remember I said this app is an experience Experience, and that's what Nike is trying to turn it into, a full experience. Not just you dropping in, buying a sneaker, and then dropping back out, thinking that you're gonna get access to off-whites. Speaking of off-whites, I just wanna let you guys know this isn't one of the 10 steps, but when it comes to things like draws and raffles, Again, a lot of it is randomized. And again, I don't have a way to beat that system. A lot of it truly is random. But what I will tell you is that hitting the favorite button on those types of shoes as well can slightly increase your chances of being able to get a shoe. And I mean very slightly because chances are everybody is gonna hit the love button for the new Off-Whites or the new Travis Scott's or whatever is coming out that's gonna be a raffle. So when it comes to raffles, Hey y'all, I don't know what to tell you. All right, we're down to tip number nine. And like I said, this is where it tends to get a little bit controversial. The last two tips are things that Nike kind of frowns upon and they understand that it happens out here, but they don't really endorse it. They wish that it didn't happen, but it is what it is. If you want the best chances of getting the best sneakers, 
this is probably what you're gonna need to do. Tip number nine is to join what's known as a cook group. Now, if you don't know what a cook group is, a cook group is a selective group of people that sometimes pay for this group to be in every month or sometimes they'll come together on their own usually on a larger app like discord or slack and they come together and they share tips and tricks on what to grab now not only do they share tips on what's really hot coming up but they also share tips about botting which is a whole other concept we'll talk about in another video they talk about what the best bots are to use how to set them up any little secret times that people may know that a certain shoe is dropping exclusive access times things of that nature there's a lot of secret information that can it's shared in a cook group. And like I said, that's why a lot of cook groups out here cost money to join every month because the moderators, the people that own these cook groups, have a lot of information that I know a lot of you guys, especially on the resale side of the house, want to get your hands on. Now, within these cook groups, the best ones for that nature, they have what's known as monitors. Now, monitors track certain websites, a lot of websites, be they Shopify or a lot of different other types of websites, and they will alert you the very second that a sneaker shows up on a website, and that includes on the sneakers app and on nike.com. Simply put, a monitor will let you know the moment that a sneaker goes live or is getting ready to come up as live and that includes a lot of times exclusive access stuff as well. So if you want the best chance to get notified the second that something drops, having a cook group and a really fast monitor inside of that cook group is a big help. Now, like I mentioned, that's starting to game the system a little bit. So I'm not necessarily saying to do that, but what I am saying is if that's what you wanna do, and the very last tip, the 10th tip that I have for you guys to try to get better access on sneakers app drops is to get a second account. Kari, what do you mean by a second account? I already have a Nike account. I know you have a Nike account and that's a beautiful thing. But when you have a second account, a brand new account that you create, a brand new Nike.com, Nike Plus account with a different email address, different payment information, different card information, you're actually doubling your chances of being able to get stuff that drops on the sneakers app. Not only that, but it's been proven that sometimes if you mess with the algorithm, like I mentioned before, hitting notify me on everything, creating a second login and a secondary account on the sneakers app can kind of refresh everything that you did in the app and give you a clean slate to start new. So a lot of people like to use a second, sometimes a third, sometimes a fourth account in order to really increase their chances of being able to get a sneaker that comes out. So if you and I are going up against the court purple Jordan ones and you have one account that you hit on one time and it says sold out, I may have two accounts and on one account, it may be sold out and on my other account, I might've gotten them. So the more accounts that you have, the better chances you have of actually getting the sneaker. Now listen, I was at Nike Atlanta a little while ago down in Atlanta and they had one of those little vending machines where you can put your barcode up and you can get a little prize for free. Now I talked to the guys that were working there and I said, hey, I got one prize, but what if I use my second account to get another prize? The guy there said, hey man, I didn't hear anything that you just said, but it is what it is. But they understand what it is. Nike just kind of frowns upon it because again, they feel like that's kind of gaming the system. So you gotta be careful doing stuff like that or kind of letting people know that you're doing stuff like that. But I need you guys to understand that that's what's going on out here in these streets and that's what you're up against when it comes to getting these shoes. And that's pretty much all that I got, guys. That's 10 tips that I really hope helps you guys get more sneakers, more exclusive drops, more things for you to rock in your collection and give us those fire pictures to on the internet. Hopefully this helped you guys out today. Hopefully you guys are able to cop a little bit more and to see a few more of those got em screens and a few less of those sold out screens. Now it's time for you guys to sound off down below and let me know what you thought of these 10 tips. Do you feel like they're gonna help you at all? Or if you have any tips of your own for the sneakers app, sound off down below. Let's dialogue with one another, dialogue with each other. Maybe we can share some tips and tricks that have worked for other people in the past in order to help other people cook. Again, everybody eats on the Sneaker Fetish channel and in the Sneaker Fetish family. So make sure you guys dialogue and share some tips down below. So make sure that everybody else eats. Of course, write it down in those comments. Make sure that you click on that subscribe button so we can welcome you into the Sneaker Fetish family to make sure you don't miss out on any more heat that comes through on the sneakers app because I guarantee you, they got a lot more heat on the way. As always, I wanna thank you guys for joining me here today on Sneaker Fetish. I go by the name of Kari. This is the Sneakers app. And until next time, I'm out.